Hello and welcome to the ASMR Jazz Clinic. Please be seated. I'll see if I can find you in our system. And what's your name, my friend? And last name? Uh, how do you spell that? Ah, okay. Right. Oh, yes. Here you are. Here you are. And you are here for the instructive chess relaxation experience. Is that correct? Right. Perfect. So please make yourself comfortable. Please relax. Don't worry about anything. Chess is a complicated game, but I will make everything very, very, very easy and very relaxing. The first thing that I will do is I will show you a couple of quick instructive games. These games are actually played by some of my patrons. And uh, the first one we're going to take a look at is a game by a patron I have called Yuan. And in that game, our patron started off with pawn to e5. And maybe you know that this is a very common way to start in chess. You open up the queen, you open up the bishop, you take control of two important center squares, and Yuan's opponent agreed and played pawn to e5. And you can see both of those moves were green on this here chess up board, uh, indicating that both of those moves were very good recommended moves. Now as white, Yuan recognizes that they should be aggressive. So we see knight to f3. You can see a red square over here, h3. We don't want to develop the knight here because a knight on the rim is dim. It will be less effective over here. We also have a blue square in front of the king. It's okay to go there, but it's not really recommended. The recommended move is knight to f3. This move attacks this pawn here, and we will see how black will try to defend that. Knight to c6, another green and therefore recommended move, defending the pawn. Bishop to c4. It is a blue move, but in actuality, this is actually a, a theoretical move. This is known as the Italian game. And we see knight to f6, another green move, a theoretical move here. Uh, and we have what is known as the two knights defense against the Italian opening. So what has the players been trying to do so far? Well, you notice that white has now no pieces in between the rook and the king, meaning that castling is now an option. So that is one goal achieved. It's a good idea to castle in chess. So Yuan has one goal achieved. Castling is now permitted. We also see that they are playing in the center, right? The knight f3, the pawn on e4, and the bishop here. Bishop is also looking at f7 here. So all white pieces um, has been aggressively deployed in the center of the board. It's a very good idea. And while that has happened, we can also see how white has cleared the space and is now able to castle basically whenever they want. And I got some notes with this game. Yuan supplied me with some notes saying that this game was played in Oma as an homage to a, a recent video I did on a Paul Morphy game where this exact position happened. So Yuan was playing some chess and thought, okay, I'll play like Paul Morphy. And in this position, Paul Morphy played pawn to d4. Not necessarily a recommended move. It is a little bit dubious uh, if you're playing against a chess grandmaster, which you will probably not 
<laughs> be doing anytime soon. This move could be dangerous for white to play because if black knows all the theory here, uh, black can get an equal position, meaning that white will have trouble retaining their opening advantage. Oh, so you did not know about that. Okay, so let me explain that. White always goes first in chess, right? And since chess is basically a discussion where two players, two opposing players, are trying to impose their will on the position and force a situation that is beneficial to them and puts their opponent at a disadvantage, having the first move is an advantage. So, um, so we'd say that white starts with a little bit of an advantage and black is tr fighting, as we say, to equalize the game. And with correct play from this position, black can equalize. It is extremely hard, however, and maybe 0.5% of chess players, uh, if we take all chess players, it would be like 1 in 200 of all chess players who would know exactly how to, to punish this. That is, if we count all chess players and not just, you know, those with a rating of 2,000 and up. Okay. Um, this here, pawn, is actually captured. You can see it's a green move, so black is playing very well. And we are not recapturing this pawn. No, Yuan very wisely just castles. Here, that is the theoretical move. And in the Morphe game, we saw knight takes on e4 here, uh, which is very, very dangerous because of the rook can come to the open file towards the king. You might have heard about king safety being very, very important. So this seemingly free pawn is rejected and instead black chooses to play bishop to c5, protecting this pawn. So now it has two protectors and there are two attackers. So it is not beneficial at this moment in time for white to come in and capture this pawn. However, with the first move, pawn to e4, or the first move of the game, you remember that? Yes, and you remember what black played? Correct, pawn to e5. That was blocking this pawn so that this pawn couldn't come further into black's position. And now after black has captured with the e-pawn on d4, what can this pawn now do? It can push forward. And that is exactly what Ewan did. Pawn to e5. You can see that is a green move. That's a very, very good move. And you may ask, can I come in and capture it? But do you see the knight? Yes, the knight is right there. So it is protecting. So we need, as black, we need to move this knight. And black chooses knight to g4. The theoretical move, as you can see, it was a green move. And um, black, with absolutely correct play, black can hold this position. Um, but chess is not only a theoretical game, it's not just a, a science. Have you heard about a guy called Anatoly Karpov? Karpov. Yes. Well, yes, he was... So he was world champion from 1975 uh, until 1985. So for 10 years, he dominated world chess. He was winning record amount of tournaments and uh, he was an absolutely fantastic player. And he said that chess is everything. Science, art and sport. So from the science perspective, yes, we can, we can say that, in theory, black can hold this position. We can say that. Uh, but it's also an art. We see a little bit of artistic flair coming in from you in here in a bit. And it's a sport. And sport is an inherently practical thing. And the next move here is very practical because it 
asks a lot of very difficult questions of black and it's a sacrifice bishop takes on f7 and that is check so we have to recapture that otherwise and we have to recapture with the king as black otherwise we just have to move we will have lost a pawn we will no longer be able to castle and and we have no other pieces that can recapture this bishop so king takes f7 you can see it's a green move it's the best move right so why did you and choose this well now we have something i'm excited to teach you about we have a discovered attack with check so this knight on f3 can come to g5 you see it's a green move it's the best move in the position on g5 this knight checks the king the knight is protected by the bishop so yuan is making use of a piece that hasn't moved yet which is kind of like getting a free move and that is very important because that means the queen cannot come in and capture the knight the queen would be lost to the bishop it is also check and it's a discovered attack because can you tell me what piece is now attacking the knight that weren't attacking it before very good the queen is attacking the knight here believe it or not we still have a theoretical position this has been studied and we know that black can actually defend this position but there's only one way to do it and that one way is to play king g8 if you're actually playing this it's much easier to play with white it's much more fun you have many more attacking chances and black has to find only moves uh, for a long time where you have a wide variety of moves you can go for um, but already there is only one move here and that's king to g8 and you will see why that is because we see a mistake for black here king to e8 it says that it's a blue move but having the, having had the benefit of analyzing this game rather deeply i can tell you it's not good this is actually losing queen takes knight now very nice getting um getting the material back so now we have a knight for a bishop and a pawn for a pawn if you can see that over here pawn for a pawn so that is equal on material but white is of course doing much better because their attack is raging on and now we see um, the decisive game ending blunder by black the only way to try and stay in the game here is to open up the d pawn to d6 opening up an attack from the bishop on the queen and trying to hold on what black played here is pawn to h6 and of course they want to kick away the knight but what do you think you did here what would you do what is the weakness of this move pawn to h6 there is something about diagonals towards the king that's incidentally also going to be the lesson for the next game right so queen to h5 very good the only green move that is check there are two legal moves you can go to f8 or you can go to e7 
we saw e7 in the game and it's green not because it's good but because it's the best and it's only the best because it's the only two legal moves and against both we have the same response that ends the game so are you comfortable are you relaxed and can you find check made in one very nice queen f7 and that is checkmate and before we go to game number two i would like to advertise a little bit for the board here that is part of our business model here at the asmr chess clinic if you would like this chess board yourself you can get a 10 percent discount either by picking up a voucher in the reception or reading the link in the description and uh it's a very cool chess board. It can, of course, light up. You can play against other people over leeches, over chess.com now. You can have handicap modes. It can teach you the rules of the game. It can teach you different strategies. It is a wonderful board. It's a bit pricey, so remember to get that 10% discount. Okay, let's go to the next game. So we set up the pieces again. We are not in a rush. We are not in a rush. Chess is a companion you'll have for the rest of your life. So don't stress it. Don't think you have to get this good by this time or whatever, like you have all the time in the world. Chess is about the enjoyment that you can experience the epic battles you can be part of, the interesting stories you can create along with others, and the rich history of the game. It's not about being super stressed out about hitting random goals. Some people get way too worked up about that. Okay, for the next game, we have another patron that has submitted this very quick game. And this game is basically about the diagonal towards the king particularly you saw this diagonal here from h5 to e8 if it's the white if it's the black king and from h4 to e1 if it's the white king so this particular patron is named sin possum very relaxed possum and sin possum started out with pawn to d4 a recommended move you saw yuan started with pawn to e4 another recommended move they are not opening up any weaknesses and they are taking control of the center bizarrely sin possum's opponent in this game was actually pretty high rated but played maybe the worst possible move in this position which is pawn to f6 you can see it's a red move right and why is this so bad well it doesn't achieve that much in controlling the center it blocks this knight this knight can now not come out and the most important thing which sin possum uh, noticed immediately can you see yes the diagonal basically sin possum played the rest of this game focusing on this diagonal and got rewarded very quickly so what piece or pieces do you think would be good at attacking on this diagonal right the queen and the bishop why because they can move along this diagonal that means i'm talking about which bishop? This one. Yes, the light squared bishop. How do we get it out? Sin Possum asks themselves the same question, and they played pawn to e4. So, controlling all these important squares and having already now the option of checking with the queen or getting out with the bishop 
looking at this diagonal. Pawn to b6, a much more sensible move than pawn to f6, um, but the weakness of f pawn to f6 will be seen quite soon. So bishop to d3, why here? Well, on d3, we can maybe access g6, which would be a square where we can check the king. And if we can do that successfully, we can notice that the king doesn't have any escape squares. Nowhere to go. And here, bishop to b7, attacking this center square. If you wanted to play this game absolutely correctly, I guess the best move here is just knight to f3. You see that's green, and that's because this weakness here is not going anywhere, and maybe black will start playing more cautiously. But another good move uh, that in practice turned out to be very, very good here is to open up this bishop towards this diagonal. It also has a trap. So send possum, the very, very relaxed possum, and you can be relaxed as well, because this is all for you. This is all for your enjoyment and relaxation. Pawn to e5. We see that's a red move, uh, because it, with absolutely correct play here, uh, white is not necessarily winning. It does, however, require absolutely correct play, which we did not see from black. So, this is a bit of a trap by Sim Sim Possum. What do you think the trap is? What's the bait? It has something to do with this bishop here. Yes, the rook here, it looks like it can be gobbled up. So we saw bishop takes on g2. So, how do we get to the king? How do we exploit the diagonal? So, bishop g6 doesn't work. It can be captured by the pawn. But what was the other piece? That is right, the queen. Queen goes to h5. Let's check. So, how many legal moves does black have? One. There is a single move to prevent the king from being captured. And that move is pawn to g6. Now we have an aesthetic choice to make. I was very happy when I saw this game because Sin Possum made the aesthetic choice, the artistic choice that conforms to my taste. You can capture that pawn here on g6 with the bishop or the queen to gain access to the king. And if you capture it with the queen, you can see it's a green move. So why do I like queen takes g6 more? Both moves lead to checkmate. And, oh. and there is only this one legal move here. You can see it's green. Not because it gives black any advantage, but because it's the only thing black can do to take the queen. And now bishop takes on g6 is checkmate. That is how dangerous this diagonal towards the king really is. And I prefer sacrificing the queen because to me it's always more satisfying to give checkmate when you have fewer pieces on the board or less powerful pieces than your opponent. Now, those were some instructive games from my patrons. Let's do something else. Let me use this board here to play against some people on the internet. And going over the game, I will explain why I do everything I do. 
I can also take suggestions, answer questions, and I may win, I may lose, but uh, two things are certain. You will learn and you will relax, and that is why we are here. Okay. Okay, they play pawn to e4. We will again play c5, the Sicilian. They play knight to f3. Standard move, we will play pawn to d6. These are all part of what we call theory. They play pawn to d4. So, in theory, this is now a open Sicilian. We always take Charlie, the c pawn. He's a kamikaze pilot. He's always going to give himself up here on d4. Okay, knight takes on d4, all theory, knight f6, and we are going to go for the Sicilian dragon now. Knight c3, pawn to d6. So we're going to take this bishop, put it in the Fianchetto position, and it will be a one-eyed super monster sniper bishop. Why one-eyed? Why one-eyed? Well, it's because it has one diagonal. It's focused on it, only looking at this one thing. Bishop C, Bishop E3, so they know their theory. Bishop G7, getting ready to castle. Okay, they play Queen D2. I think, I think that's a mistake because they haven't played pawn to f3. So I think that I can now play knight g4. Because they needed to play bishop e2 or pawn to f3 in order to defend this. So knight g4, very importantly attacking the bishop and defending h6. So the bishop cannot go to h6 and it cannot go to f4 because I can then play e5, which would be a fork on the bishop and the knight. And if black, if white loses this dark squared bishop, this super mon one eyed super monster sniper bishop becomes the super duper monster sniper bishop. And the super duper monster sniper bishop is stronger than the regular super monster sniper bishop because it's duper. It's always better to be super duper than just. Uh, than just super, and also it will be unopposed. That was that's what makes it duper, uh, because there won't be an opposing dark squared bishop. So we see bishop e2 should have been played before queen e2. So knight takes on e3. It's one of the benefits of um, knowing your theory. So I knew that this is good for black. Queen takes e3 and now just castles. And I have at least equalized in this position. Pawn to h4, trying to come in and uh, use this pawn as a can opener. I will play pawn to h5 um, in order to not have the h file opened. And I guess they can play f3 now, this pawn one square forward with the idea of queen two square forward with this pawn in order to make an attack against my king. Against my king. What would you do in this position? They do play f3. I think also maybe they could castle. Potentially that's a good idea for them. Uh, we will be a little bit aggressive now, knight c6. So now we are attacking their knight. They may try something like um, knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, and then g4. Uh, that looks like that is what they are going for. Knight takes knight, pawn takes knight. And now they do castle, meaning that we can play something like rook to 
B8, looking at B2. Um, that also means that, and I know I'm hanging the A, uh, A7 pawn here. I think they don't have time to, to come in and capture that. They do come in and capture that, okay. Um, it's very surprising. Can I play bishop takes, knight pawn takes? Or my rook is attacked. Should be quite easy to defend it. So I'm guessing just bishop e6. And I think um, white may be in trouble here. Potentially. Because this super monster sniper bishop has now mounted a laser scope on their sniper rifle. And that is making a little red dot here on b2, coordinating with the rook, potentially the queen. And if this queen is not careful, I will play pawn to c5. So the queen will have a hard time getting back. Um, so I think that probably we need to see pawn to g4, or at least why it should be calculating if it works, or we should something. I Okay, king to b uh, b1. Can you find the winning move? The rook here on b8 is very good. And we have a super monster sniper bishop. In fact, it's a super duper monster sniper, uh, sniper bishop. And it can just come in very well and capture on c3 because the pawn cannot recapture because it's pinned to the king by the rook. And now this game is effectively over. We are up material, uh, like we were down material in the last game. You can see our opponent actually just resigned here um, because in, in the last game when I made a blunder where I plundered a bishop, I had compensation, I had some trumps I could play on. Here, my attack is raging on. You can see this bishop extremely strong looking here, this bishop looking here, the rogue is active, and white was just not in time to play g4. And I can show you, before we conclude the lesson, I can show you how white is supposed to play this. So we put up all the pieces, and then you'll get a little small lesson in the Sicilian dragon from the white side. So it's e4, c5. Now we're just in a Sicilian, okay, knight f3, d6. Um, actually, I'll just till the board. Okay, I just told the board that I can show the different colors here. So green and green here because it's a, it's a book move. It's a theoretical move, so they light, light up in green here in the beginning of the game, knight f2 and pawn to d6, and pawn to d5, and I have a video about the Sicilian dragon. You know, if you've seen that, that Charlie the sea pawn always wants to give himself up on d4. That's why we put it there. The pawn on d6 is more to pretend, 
uh, protect against stuff coming to e5. Knight takes, you can see that also the green move. Now we attack their pawn on e4, like so, with knight to f6, they play knight to c3 defending, and now it becomes the Sicilian dragon with pawn to g6. And here you can absolutely play this move, bishop to e3, uh, and I can play this move uh, bishop to g7, but here you don't play queen to e uh, to d2, because as we saw in the game, I was able to trade this knight for this bishop, and that is a huge strategical goal, making my life much, much easier. Instead, you can play bishop to e2. Uh, you saw that wanted it wanted to go there anyways. Or you can play pawn to f3. And let's say they go pawn to f3 and castles. So first of all, there's still uh, the, the bishop here on e3. I was not able to trade it off. And now if I go queen to d2 as white, what is this about? I cannot play knight out here. And this bishop can now come to h6 to trade itself off for my super monster sniper bishop. And if my one-eyed super monster sniper bishop is lost, uh, I will be at a strategic disadvantage. Um, also, let's say I play uh, knight to c6. It's one of the uh, big moves here. Um, we can actually already see pawn to h4. We can also just say castles. That's uh, the main theoretical idea. And I play pawn. I play bishop to d7. And now pawn to h4. Four, and when I play pawn to h5 to stop this, we can have this bishop to come here to trade itself off, off or even stronger, we can now play pawn to g5. And here you can see there is this attack developing. I'm going at some point to put my rook to c8. And let's say I do it right now. Let's say they capture here. I recapture with uh, the knight, and I will make some exchange here, uh, or I will try this knight to go here and here to ch change it, uh, exchange it for the light squared bishop, and the battle will go from here with me trying to make the black trying to make an attack against the white king, and uh, white trying to attack along the h file, moves like bishop here trying to push here to exchange here, then later, then later, queen here, exchange this pawn and trying for checkmates on h7 is what white is trying to do. And that is uh, the end of your appointment here at the ASMR clinic. I hope you had a good time. I hope you'll come back. You can just make uh, an appointment with the secretary in the reception. And uh, yeah, you can also leave um, a comment we have this this system on your way out where you can sort of type in if you liked it uh, liked it here it's it means a lot for us here if if you do that at the asmr chess clinic and um, thanks for being here i hope i'll see you again <laughs>